I grew up in a beautiful country known as Sri Lanka. The island is just absolutely breathtaking. Just picture those perfect sparkling beaches and lush green forests, and you have Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, when I was growing up, the beauty of the land was often overshadowed by a civil war. One day, when I was about five years old, I was getting ready to rush to school like any other day. I'm not gonna lie, I was always that kid that was late to school, so rushing was quite the normal. My mom dropped me off at preschool and then headed off to work. Sounds like a pretty regular mundane day, right? Well, it was definitely not mundane, to say the least. My name is Navindi De Silva, and I almost died when I was five years old. A little bit about me is that I currently attend the University of British Columbia in the Faculty of Sciences. I'm a first year student. In the future, I hope to pursue medicine because I'm just an absolute nerd for biology if I'm being completely honest. Today, I will be presenting a topic which I have named Gratitude in the Face of Adversity. I will be correlating aspects of gratitude to this year's theme, education. So when you first hear the phrase, gratitude in the face of adversity, what do you think of? What's the first thing that just pops into your mind? This is the point of my presentation where I would have asked you to speak up and engage with me, but given current circumstances, this is not possible. So instead, I have prepared a few phrases and words that come to my mind. Personally, I think of overcoming obstacles, making lemonade out of lemons, never-ending conflict, persistence, maintaining a positive mindset, delight at the end of the tunnel, appreciating life and resilience. I'm sure a lot of you have your own wonderful ideas about the phrase as well. During my talk, I will be touching on many of the phrases and words that you see on the slide right now and talking you through how they correlate to education. So now back to that memory of mine where my mother dropped me off at preschool before heading off to work. Let me tell you about how I almost died that day. That day, my life was threatened by a bomb. A bomb was dropped off at a bank very close to my preschool. That day, many lives were lost and families were shattered. I left preschool that day with really no idea about what was going on. My friends and I, children of 45 years, we were traumatized. I didn't even have real recollection of what occurred that day until last year when a similar event took place once again and took the lives of many. As I grew older, I realized how unusual it was to be in a situation like this. I mean, when I moved to Canada in 2012 and told to my friends, let's just say they were just a tad surprised. Oh, I'm just joking. They were very shocked. As you just witnessed, I need to make light of these dark moments to keep moving forward with my life. As I was saying, I realized how abnormal it was to be in a situation like this. I mean, how many of you could tell me that you have? This is the point of my presentation where I would have asked you to raise your hand if you've been in a similar situation, but well, 2020 really didn't pan out the way it was supposed to be, did it? So here I am presenting to a pretty much empty room. At least it definitely helps with my nerves. So that's very good. Unfortunately, situations like this were quite common in many developing countries and in Sri Lanka at that time. As I was saying earlier, there was an ongoing war and well, situations like this were quite frequent. In fact, my mother had a similar experience to me, except she did sustain some serious injuries because the roof quite literally collapsed around her at work. The truth is, situations like this are very common in many developing countries, so common that most citizens of developing countries could say that they've faced any of that experience or at least know of someone that has. Growing up, I remember seeing horrible situations happen to people every single day on the news channel. And this is all due to an economic struggle in these developing countries. And this struggle, this economic situation, and these horrible circumstances that stemmed off of it is why my parents decided to immigrate to Canada in the first place. My parents, they lived a comfortable life in Sri Lanka. They had good jobs that they really loved to do. They never struggled to put food on the table. We had a beautiful home. But they decided to leave that and sacrifice all of that for my brother and I. They moved to an English-speaking country when they could barely speak English themselves to give my brother and I a better chance at life. As I walked the crisp, clean streets of Canada, I was quite honestly in shock. There were just so many opportunities here, so many ways for me to get involved and take initiative. I could follow my passions and strive for my aspirations freely. I mean, how amazing is it that I'm here right now connecting with all of you virtually? 
talking to you about my personal experiences. You're listening to someone that you haven't even met before. How incredible is that? When I moved to Canada, I wanted to make the most of the opportunities I was fortunate to have for two reasons. Number one, my parents had left a comfortable life to give me the chance to live a more successful, fulfilling life. And number two, I have access to a plethora of various types of opportunities in Canada. And so every single day, I work so hard and make a genuine effort to be involved in my school and local communities because I recognize that I'm fortunate to be in a position to help others. And now this brings me to the education system. The education system can definitely be better. There's no doubt about that. You know, in my first semester of uni, I had so many existential crises and meltdowns because I felt like my high school experience didn't prepare me whatsoever for what was to come in post-secondary. I mean, it's not like it could have with COVID and all. However, in my first semester of university, I realized many things because it was my hardest year. And so I would like to share these things with you. I've prepared three questions that I would really like you to just think deeply about and consider and think about how you can apply it to your life. So the first question is, isn't there room for improvement when it comes to everything in life? Now really think about that question. Have you ever found something that was so flawless? And now that brings me to my second question. Is there anything in life that is considered perfect and permanent in its perfection? Really think about that question. Even if you found something that was perfect, was it permanent in that perfection? And my final question is, should we even be striving for perfection in the first place? In our society, we are pushed to be these perfect individuals, but is that actually good for us? If there isn't room for improvement, you're not adapting. And if you think that something is perfect, you're being blinded because, well, nothing is. And if you're striving for perfection, you're neglecting what should matter most to you, your happiness. And so the education system can prove as well, because every single day as society changes, the education system must change and adapt and improve to prepare youth for the real world. Nothing is perfect after all. Although I felt unprepared for my first semester in university, my high school experience prepared me for something so much greater. It prepared me for society, and I am beyond grateful for that. Now, I would really like to just emphasize self-motivation, because that's really the key when it comes to the education system. Your goals, whether they are a career goal, a family goal, or any goal, to be honest, success isn't simply going to fall into your lap, because life does not work that way. I really wish it did, because that would have been nice, but it doesn't. You need to put in the effort to achieve your dreams, and school teaches you that. You do the assignments, you work hard, and you will receive a deserving grade. Even the most perfect school system will definitely 100% fail you until you realize that effort is required to achieve your dreams. Until you realize that you need to make your dreams happen, school system is merely an unused tool. These days, it's simply too easy to blame the school system. And the day that you realize that you need to make your dreams happen is also the day that you realize that you're fortunate. Because that's when. That's when you take advantage of everything that you are fortunate to have, including the right to learn in the first place. Until then, the school system, the education system that has been built with so much hard work, will really hold no purpose for you. All I hope is that you leave today recognizing how fortunate you are and appreciating everything you have. You are lucky to be here right now. You're lucky to have lived this long. You're lucky to have human rights. You're lucky to have the opportunity to learn. I know it may seem like life is difficult because, well, life is very difficult for all of us. Every single one of us has hidden dark demons that keep us up at night, wondering if life is even worth living for. I just hope that you find the strength to overcome the obstacles and the curveballs the life throws at you by remembering how fortunate you are and being appreciative of everything that you have. There are really just too many people in this world where their greatest aspiration is to simply survive through the day. You are fortunate to be able to aspire for something more than just surviving. 
conclude my presentation, I would like to leave you with a quote by Yasmin Shayan. It's okay to be having a hard time while also feeling thankful for your blessings. Make space for both by honoring that both can be true. Thank you for joining me today.